fight commentary breakdowns. This is from a 1917 movie called China and the Chinese by Educational Films. This film does not exist in its entirety. This is from a New Zealand archive. Only about 16 minutes exist. So, captured a double sword demonstration by a Chinese person. Look at that. He still has his Manchu hair, if you notice. They ended the dynasty in 1911 or 1912. I forgot. I think it was 1911. But he still has his Manchu hair. That's it, man. That's the only Kung Fu I could find in this. There's a lot of documentaries that Westerners did when they visited China in like the 1910s and 1920s and 1930s. But a lot of the film archives are unfortunately lost. So what we have, unfortunately, are just little remnants, little treasures. So that dance foo, that Pekin opera foo, is the only thing we have from this. But for your own kind of historical knowledge, I would recommend you watch this entire 16-minute segment. You'll see a lot about what China was like back in the old days. Look at this. So this I will put the link. Next up, 1897 Japanese sword demonstration. Onoha Itoryu. Onoha Itoryu. I don't think it's the style that Coach Paris does, but this is Japanese sword. Looking a little bit like Kendo. What do you guys think? But if you notice, you compare this to Kendo, what don't they have? They don't have any head guards, man. If you notice. So. How is the fight style going to be different without any head protection? So again, guys, I've never pretended I know anything about weapon sparring. I've only sparred twice with weapons. So I'm not even a novice. I just don't know. So, And for those of you who want to give your analysis of this, please let me know. Just leave the comments because I am looking at this just from a casual martial arts standpoint. Um, what I can see, the little pads they're wearing maybe it simulates armor or something. Because I see him using that armor, the arm pad, to block a lot. So, see, he, he keeps blocking with his arms. And I don't, I don't know if it's the other guy is showing how to attack the arms. Or he's showing, okay, this is, if you had armor... You could block those blows. I don't know. For those of you who are Hema trained or Kenjutsu trained, please give your commentary. Here we have 1918. And this was in France. Because there was Chinese people serving the French in their labor corps. So these people mostly worked digging ditches and stuff. They didn't charge or do any kind of front lines type of work. As in like like shooting work, but this is them demonstrating their kung fu, and I assume the French weren't that impressed because you know French are really good at running away, and if they were impressed by this, maybe they would have told these Chinese people to charge for them. So obviously the French, with their savat, right, knew that their savat could kick butt. This is mostly dance. I know those of you getting mad at me. Oh my God, Jerry, you're always criticizing. The Chinese Labor Corps, 1918, on the Western Front. This is 1939, a Chinese sword form. It's in the Beijing area, not the Beijing area, like Beijing, the city. So, looking like every sword form, just a little bit more sloppy. And, oh, look at this old master. So... I'm just going to guess that the old master taught it to the young master. And I very likely think, not I very likely think, I think that very likely the old master never applied his form. So this young master not really know how to apply his form either. Let's see if there's anything else. No. Out of all the clips, this is my favorite. 1920 jujitsu. 1920 jujitsu and wrestling. From Fort Meade in Maryland. Look at this, man. I didn't even know that jujitsu. Look at that. Like Kimura. Sorry, not a Kimura. Guillotine. Look at that little kind of like an arm lock. That was kind of more Aikido, but. Okay, so. Oh, look at that. How do you take down someone with a bayonet? 
That is pretty cool, man. And okay, so this is more wrestling, right? Wrestling's always been part of a American tradition, so from the days of Abe Lincoln and stuff like that. So it's no doubt that we see wrestling being trained. Like Americans are good wrestlers, but I think what's really cool is to see the jujitsu, man. Look at that rear naked choke, a rear naked choke takedown, and then guillotine. Look at that, and then kind of arm lock, and then kind of a, some kind of um, Aikido technique. I didn't even know that like jujitsu, this kind of stuff, was being trained in the American army. I mean, I didn't even know that this stuff made it to America. So this is really cool. This is why it's my favorite. And then we have the these soldiers training their boxing skills too. Oh yeah, just look at look at them just practicing. You see, practicing the slip and the hit. You see. He slips the jab and he hits. Slips the jab and he hits. Right? Look at that. He, he slips and he uppercuts. See that? Slip uppercut. And now they spar. Compare this to all the sparring we saw with like the Chinese martial arts. Which one's more legit, man? It's so interesting. I guess it's a boxing match or something. I don't know if it's sparring or it's a boxing match. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. Do we see any difference between... The modern sparring, I guess modern sparring, maybe there's more like hands to the jaw type of thing. If you notice, they're more kind of in a pugilist or like a, the kind of the classic boxing stance. Oh, I saw a hook right there. It's really cool to look at this stuff in slow motion to, to see how they train. See this guy, he jabs, right? And then he goes in with a body shot. So, watch it. See? A jab and a body shot. You see that? Jab, a slip, and a body shot. Jab, slip, body shot. You see that? It's great drills. And then this one, a jab, slip, and then an uppercut. Right? A jab, slip, and an uppercut. You see that? Super cool. A jab, slip, and uppercut. And then here they, here they, this is some sparring. I love, he, he telegraphed that hook completely. Let's look at this guy. That guy, that guy telegraphed. <laughs> Man. Wild punches at each other. Oh, I wish we I wish we had more of that, man. Throwing jab. Look at that. He, he threw. He sh did a rib shot right there. Dude, in a weird way, it almost looks like they're doing Wing Chun, man. The way they're tapping each other's gloves and stuff. Wow, you see, fighting that can be effective, eventually it kind of all looks the same. So now we have Savat from 1896. Look at that. 1896 Savat. Again, um, Savat versus kickboxing, what are the differences? The main difference is, you see the shoes they're wearing? It's... Basically, if you had a fight on the street, you probably don't have your shoes off, right? So they're fighting with shoes. Apparently, Savat was invented in the old days on ships, but I don't know if, how much truth there is. But it's really awesome. I'm sure you guys have saw if I didn't point it out, but I'll just point it out if I see it again. There is a lot of great stuff right here, including my favorite shovel kick, my favorite oblique kick. I think this is slow motion, so we'll see it. He's scooping the kick. A little side kick. I think I'll stop it when we see it. Well, I don't know what that was like an overhand. Look at it. See that? Right, this is our little oblique kick right here, right? A little. You see it in Wing Chun a lot. We'll see it later too. I'll show you more examples of this, but it's really cool to see that kick. I mean, I didn't know about Savat back in the day, so I never. I thought like Wing Chun or other forms of like I've seen Shaolin Kung Fu that does that kind of oblique kick, shovel kick, whatever you call it. But seeing it in Savat in 1896 is awesome. Again, another 
oblique or shovel kick. Now we have a Savat punching demonstration. Look at that. Practicing the stepping. And now look at that. Practicing the slip. Right? Look at that. The bob and roll, as they call it. Look at that. This is so cool. So head movement, man. So important. Now it's head movement plus counter. Look at that. Now head movement and stepping. How cool is this, guys? The way he's punching looks kind of gay. I know that might offend people using that word, but it just looks kind of gay. But still, I wouldn't say that to his face. I'd get my teeth knocked in by him. Look at that. Doing little combos now. So interesting. Guys, for those of you who do savat or kickboxing, why the kind of like this body movement? You guys give me some thoughts as to why the punching's like this. This is cool, guys. 1896 Burmese martial art called Thong. And this is a Burmese MMA, man. It's really cool. You'll see they, they grapple. They they take it to the ground. Um, Thong is not Lethway, guys. This is not Lethway. This is a Buddhist martial art. Um, look at look at them wrestling. You see, they, they went into grappling range, and now they're... Look at that. See, it's on the ground now, and they continue fighting on the ground. This is one of the original MMAs, man. It's called Thayong. Look at that. He swept them, threw them. And I do another match again. Oh, look at that. Look at that. He takes them down, and it doesn't stop on the ground, you see. And... The fact that this is a Buddhist martial arts, it's a lot more hardcore than any of the sort of Chinese martial arts we've seen so far. So now this is a 1900s jujitsu demonstration. Um, some people might say it looks like judo, but again, judo has the roots in jujitsu. So um, the guy may turn it into judo because he felt like jujitsu was getting too soft. By the way, guys, if you notice, oh, rare naked choke right there. It's a really short little guy versus a big guy. It's kind of funny. So, now it's they're more evenly matched. So, look at those throws, man. Do you guys know how to do throws like this? See, it, it ends up on the ground. And always start standing up, though. Look at that. Oh, look at that. That was a great. He he slipped into north-south position and somehow he got reversed. Yeah, you can tell their newaza, the ground portion of it. Their newaza is just kind of okay. And then there's there's Kendo. We don't have to watch Kendo. So let's watch some more. Savat, 1928 Savat. And look at him. He's teaching. He's teaching how to kick the shin. And now, okay, you can body kick. And then head kick. Look at that. I'm not a fan of... Oh, that was pretty cool. I'm not a fan of every time he kicks, he, he moves both his hands. You see? He moves both his hands the other way. I get it for balance, but you kind of want to save your hands to you know follow up with combos or to protect yourself. Look at these kicking drills that he's making her do. And, dude, getting kicked in with sh shoes on, man, it's, shoes add so much. Like, I've, I've talked about this before, but back in the day, I've kicked people before, and, like, I made them bleed just because I was wearing shoes. Not because my kicks were any special, just the shoes, it cut them. I think they're going to do some sparring now. Here they go. Look at them. Using the kicks to gauge distance. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> he had to fix his hair. Did you see that? Oh, doing the oblique kick again. Did you guys see that? Okay, that was never jump. I mean, what was he trying to do there? We're going to have to look at that later. He kind of just jumped and just kind of like... It was a very ineffective... Oh, that was cool. Like combos, man. Great oblique kick he just did. Little faint. Why did you follow that with a punch or something? Like, I don't know what levels they are, but it just seems like they both would do better if they could follow. Like, don't just do kicking combos. Do kick punch, kick punch combos like that. Oh, he ate one to the face. And he has to fix his hair again. 
Oh man, that was hilarious, guys. Guys, what are the rules to survive? Is there a reason why they're not like just trying to hurt each other? Is this a point fighting system that I don't know of? Look at him, fix his hair. Look at that, throwing an oblique kick. Get his leg caught. I want to see the next moment, the moment where he did that really weird attempt at a combo. Here, here it goes, here it goes. So, he totally misjudges the range, right? He's supposed to be maybe a little bit here. So, like, one feet length out here so he could actually kick. So, that's what happened. So, he didn't extend his leg in time. That's why it looks so awkward and he just kind of tripped. <laughs> cool. More Chinese opera foo from the 1930s. Um, this is from a film called China's Children. And... Looks like it's just street performance again. Just some opera foo. Looks pretty cool, but I doubt these people, their ancestors participated in the Boxer Rebellion. But maybe their ancestors did. I don't know. Now it's a sword versus a guy with bare hands. Which, of course, of course, that's dance, right? You're not going to go up against a sword with your bare hands. You're going to get cut in two seconds. So this is pretty cool, guys. 1928. Maybe this is Bartitsu. But it's like they're teaching kind of New York City Bronx children how to fight with sticks, like stick fencing. So I would call this Bartitsu, man. Bartitsu is the art of fencing with canes. So like when these people become old people, some of them might still be alive. You know, they would be Bartitsu because they carry around canes. I don't know. I'm just saying random stuff right now. But um, there they go. Look at that. All of them practicing the different angles to hit. The American version of Kali or Eskrima. Look at that. So this teacher, man, he's uh, Sherlock Holmes' second cousin. Look at that. See how to hit, how to defend. So, Dude, this is... I would call this Bartitsu, man. This is so cool. Look at that. Wow, he's like Teddy Roosevelt's third cousin. It's almost like a like a, a Star Wars initiation <laughs> with the lightsabers. <laughs> People are like, Jerry, you sound soft. You sound like a nerd. Hell yeah, I'm a nerd. Okay, so this is more Savat. And 1900, man. This is from 1900. So again, just kicks. So cool. Look at that. I'm so glad that as films started getting developed... People are like, yeah, we got to document some of this really cool historical martial arts. This is freaking awesome, man. Guys, um, 1897, uh, French boxing savant. This is in Lyon. And these guys are better at throwing combos. This kind of looks more like a dance fight. It almost reminds me of Capoeira. But um, at least they're practicing their combos. Dude, maybe Capoeira came... Partly from this, man. Capoeira is Brazilian. There's no French influence in Brazil. Right? Oh, see that? Do you see that? More oblique kicks, man. My favorite thing to talk about. Oblique kicks, shovel kicks. There's a reason I talk about them because they work. So, baton hitting. But we want to see the... We want to see this cool stuff. Just be careful. Don't spin yourself too dizzy. I'm dizzy just watching this. What do you guys think? I'm kind of dizzy watching this. That's a good thing to do. Every day, spin yourself like 20 times to get used to the dizzy feeling, right? Like I said, arts, look at that, look at that a little shovel kick. All these arts, man, they start looking the same. There's only a few ways, right? A few ways to get torque, a few ways to generate power. They also look the same. I'm going to end off here. This is just savat training, just little drills. 1901 from the Lorient School of Marines in France. This is the barracks. And... I kind of want to show this also because it looks like our drunken vodka master. Our drunken Russian vodka master kind of looks like this sometimes when he does his forms. So look at that. <laughs> Practicing kicking from all the directions, man. It's pretty cool. The, the punches are coming from the hips, which is kind of funny too. But there's a little... It almost looks like a dance, man. It seriously looks like a dance. Compare this to our drunken Russian master. Okay, guys, fight commentary breakdowns. Thank you so much for exploring this stuff with me. This was awesome. I love you guys. 
more historical footage to come. Send me some if you find any. Okay, guys. Fight Commentary Breakdowns out. <laughs>